while playing against the Nepalis winners went wrong for you because we have, you lost all of your wickets while defending these winners. Maybe you should have gone for some shots against them. I mean, in hindsight, uh, we, uh, we are disappointed in general. I we know that we can play to our standards. Uh, the technical part may be uh, one thing that might be a cause, but I think there was uh, quite a lot of more reasons as well. Uh, but yes, that might be the cause. So was the track pretty too much? I mean today, yes, it was damp and soft. Even I, I, I would have loved to bowl first on this wicket. Uh, but it's credit to them, they, all, they always throw the right areas, they bowl within the stumps. And uh, the two guys produced a green spell. Uh, yes, I don't want to take the credit uh, away from them. I, I don't want to give any excuses. Can you ask him to speak a little louder? Yeah, I mean, whenever we enter the field, we want to give a hundred percent with whatever we had. So, I mean, that's what the two spinners were told, and I think us two started brilliantly. And uh, I mean, the hope was just to keep rolling well, and we tried that, but I mean, it was mostly a batting for us. Okay, then I'll just speak a little bit louder. Well, I think as I mentioned, the first two games we lost it. We came close, but I think we lost it in the few moments, the key moments where we didn't hold our nerve or where we could have been tactically, strategically better. And in general, of course, I mean, we don't want to shy away that uh, our batting unit hasn't been that consistent in scoring runs. And uh, these are the two key reasons I see, but of course there are a lot of other reasons and we have to go back to our drawing board again and you know, we have a good six weeks now to reflect on it and plan for it. Uh, better to prepare for our own series in Florida. Yep. So at the presentation, I heard you say there's a lot of things that need to be fixed and not just technical things. Can you elaborate on what you mean by that? Um, I mean, uh, there are a lot of aspects to your game, the way you prepare, uh, how specifically we prepared for these conditions and what the mindset of the batsman was, what the mindset of the bowlers was. So I meant in terms of not just a technical thing, yes of course, but there is a tactical aspect to it, a skill aspect to it. Um, a mental aspect to it, so there are a lot of things, uh, team culture aspect to it, so there are a lot of things that we need to, to, to reflect on and get things better. When, when, you, when you say the mental aspects and the, and the team culture aspects, again, you know, it's, it's kind of big, what do you mean by that? What needs to change? Um, I mean, I don't want to be too specific, it's just uh, individually, I don't know how to word it, but it's just uh, if we want it bad, bad enough, I mean, obviously we started rough, so the, the guys were low and confident, and uh, we need to find a way uh, out of it. And uh, it just happened to be clear, and we're just not well prepared enough. And I don't want to give any excuses. Coach, one of the things I heard Saurabh shout yesterday in the field, there was a half chance that was in the air of Nisarks bowling towards deep, uh, deep cover and Aaron Jones didn't put in the dive and I could hear Sarab audibly shout, come on guys, we need commitment. And that's kind of one of the points he's touching on, the commitment, the mental aspects, uh, the team culture. As a coach, what have you observed on those points that you feel has gone wrong in this tour? Uh, I think it actually goes back to the previous tour, you know, when uh, we had an incident that uh, this impacted on our final performance over in the UAE. And that wasn't dealt with properly, uh, administratively, or from the team point of view. People like yourself then get the opportunity to uh, put that in the media, which these players are not professional players, so they don't know how to accept and handle that. Uh, some of the things that are truth, and you, you can't hide away from that, but some of the things, the end to end up, and the lies that are spoken about, it, it impacts on them. 
and I guess so as you're starting to prepare to play a game of cricket, sometimes you don't always have the strong connection that you require to bring your best tactical and technical performance. And then that's party to what I guess has happened here. Uh, and we found that yeah, we haven't had the connection strong enough. Just, just to follow up on that, you say the team isn't professional. This is the highest paid team in associate cricket though. Way higher paid than Nepal, way higher paid than Scotland or the Netherlands even, who are going to be in the ODI Super League. Where does the accountability come in when these guys are put on these kind of contracts? Yeah, I'm not sure what their contracts are, to be honest. So I don't know where they lie in terms of other associates. What I do know is from series to series, they just go back to their home base and don't do any work because the facilities are not there for them, the coaching's not there for them. So when they get together prior to the start of the series, it's almost like they started again. And I guess for this series in particular, with myself only being engaged 10 days before the start of the series, you've got no work, no chance to build up the work that's required to take on, I guess, these conditions, and two fine teams in these conditions. So we've been exposed and we have to take the consequence of that, which today is embarrassment. But overall, it's no points for four games. Just one, just one more. One. After a series like this, and especially ending with a performance like this, going back to that last match in the UAE, do you feel like, and this is for both of you, do you feel like there, there should be wholesale changes, or is it worth keeping the faith with a series of players who have been largely underperforming? I think well, certainly over the last five games they've underperformed, but the previous seven games they performed to the point where we've won six out of eight. So, you know, we know that this group of players, when connected, and when, I guess, closely attached to the game plan, can perform at this level. So I think we need to try and get back to that. Uh, whoever's in charge moving forward, it's, it's obviously a big job for the administration, it's a big job for the high performance, the new high performance manager, to make sure that competition is created. That's very important. I think at the moment there's not a lot of competition around, but a pressure on these particular guys who you refer to as underperforming. Thank you, Dave. Final. But you've already played 12 matches in the league too. Do you think that this is not the best of the surface uh, of all in terms of uh, outfield and the playing field? It's, it's, it's hard to, to, I guess, rank them because they're all uniquely different. And even in, you know, I've had the, the pleasure of working at the full level and wherever you go, you find different surfaces and different conditions. These conditions here over this last 10 days have been fine. You know, I'm not going to criticise the conditions. They're different. You know, we had some wickets that turned a little bit down in Florida. In the UAE, the wickets were more conducive to baseball then. Uh, but these conditions here are different, but they're certainly not the same. It just means that you have to bring a different skill set. And we saw the Amani guys yesterday play extremely well and get a really good score. We saw them chase down a good score against Nepal on the weekend. So you know, the conditions are fine, I'm sure. The local hosts here will keep working hard on you know, the infrastructure around it, improving the outfield. The surfaces are unique, but they're not difficult. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.